gotta admit, it was the first time I've been camping in uh, tent camping and wow. in quite a few years. Yes. So uh, what I learned is uh, I've gotten pretty soft. Over oh. the years. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it was even uh, uh, it was even a point where uh, I was feeling stressed out and, and, and getting all the camping gear and equipment. It's been a long time since I knew where everything was, and and uh, and the wife and I ended up even even getting into a bump. Believe it or not, we we don't normally bump. We usually get along pretty good, but um, I was out getting everything and and uh doing all the all the shopping uh -huh. um, i was getting all the equipment ready i was packing up the car and then rashima didn't get off work till one so i was just really feeling the pressure didn't have a quiet time that morning there and, and, right and uh didn't kick it off right and uh uh and then didn't eat on top of that oh now yeah, you're hangry and then I was hangry. I was unspiritual and hangry. Come on. And, uh, you know, thank God uh, I have an incredible wife uh, of 30, 32 years. Wow. Um, That's awesome, bro. Uh, we got something to eat. I uh, had some time in the Word. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and then later on, we, we got to the camp uh, and got settled in. We were able to confess with my, my brother Jeff there and, oh, and just be open. Uh, and, uh, and it was very... Refreshing, but it reminds me um, of what the topic is today. All right, bro. And uh, uh, the Bible talks about two kinds of wisdom, and that's the title of the lesson today. Wow. Is is two kinds of wisdom? That's good. And uh, and I would ask, uh, what what kind of wisdom are we running on today? Uh, as as disciples of Jesus Christ, as men of God. What kind of wisdom are we gravitating to? Because according to the Bible, there's two types. <coughs> if you look online, online thinks there's three types. <laughs> wow. And uh, uh, online, the, the, uh, the world would say that uh, if you look on the Internet, that there's godly wisdom. Amen. Amen. There is earthly wisdom and there is satanic wisdom. Ooh. But according to God's word, there are only two types of wisdom. The heavenly wisdom that comes from God and earthly wisdom that is unspiritual and demonic. James 3, 13, which is our theme scripture for the evening. So the question remains, uh, what kind of wisdom are we relying on today? Um, when we left to go camping, I got to confess, brothers, I was... Relying on earthly wisdom. Mm -hmm. And earthly wisdom led me to be very frustrated. Uh, led me to get angry. And for my, me, it ended up having to fall into sin and, and having an argument. It wasn't really an argument, but it was just being disunified. Yeah. Um, and, and being abrasive. And, and, and really not connecting with my wife on. on a spiritual level. And in a way that was, uh, that was fluid. And so... Uh, so we were feeling, uh, I was sinful in my anger, and so uh, we were just heated and hot and, and, and not speaking to each other respectfully. Um, and, and it was all because I, I take responsibility as a man in my household, amen, on, um, that I didn't kick it off uh, with a good quiet time and prayer to God. And I just thought I was going to muscle through it on my own. How do you start out your day, brothers? There it is. Yeah. <coughs> Um, this is why we, we, we have quiet times, we pray, and we connect with God is so we can kick off thinking about what's coming at us in the course of the day in a spiritual manner. Um, wisdom, uh, the wisdom we fill our hearts and minds with the most uh, is going to be the wisdom that we're relying on uh, to make the decisions in our life. And it's going to direct the course of our day uh, in first Timothy 4 1 it says the spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons this is earthly wisdom um, and uh, um, as I'm sharing with you I'm showing you also as an example that none of us are immune 
to falling into one type of wisdom or the other, that it's a spiritual battle for us each and every day. And uh, <clears throat> the world would have us believe uh, that there's different types of wisdom. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's even accredited teachers in our schools today and, and professionals, high-ranking political officials that are in positions of responsibility and, and they've spent a tremendous amount of time <coughs> and money to get a, a piece of paper that basically tells everyone that they're very, very smart and yeah. educated. Yeah. And then they come in and without our knowing are able to come into our schools and teach our children that you don't know if you're a boy or if you're a girl. Oh. Oh. Preach, bro. Preach. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, no one wants to talk about that. And what kind of wisdom is that today? Sure. Yeah. This is a society that we live in. And, 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 and the world looks to uh, uh, people of education and people of, uh, of knowledge in this way that are spewing these types of things uh, into our schools and into our children. And, and we need to be people that are looking at uh, what the Bible says. And the reason I bring this up is we know exactly what we are today. Uh, does anyone here have any doubt in, in this pavilion that, that you're a man? No. At men's day, at midweek service? No. Um, why? Because we believe that's the way God created us. And in fact, uh, science would even reveal that Yes, we are biologically male. Amen? Amen. Um, God even says in Genesis 1.27, God created mankind in his own image, male and female. Yep. Yep. In Psalm 139, in verse 13, David gives us an incredible psalm that says, uh, God created my inmost being. He knitted me together in my mother's womb, and he made me in a secret place. You know where that secret place is? I can't tell you it's a secret. <laughs> James 3.13. Come on, bro. Brothers, reads, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life mm. by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom mm. but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about or deny the truth such wisdom does not come down from heaven but is earthly unspiritual demonic and demonic for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice come on bro so, brothers, when we're on the road and someone cuts in front of you and we just lose it and freak out, we're being worldly and dealing with it in a worldly way. I'm not going to look at anybody when I say that. I don't want to call anyone out on that in front of everybody. Or maybe I will. Uh, but the, the point is... Um, in our life, are we dealing with things spiritually or unspiritually? Wow, that's a good question. With spiritual wisdom and unspiritual wisdom. How are things at home, brothers? How are things at home? Uh, married brothers, how are, how are your marriages doing? How are you getting along with your wife right now? You having some spiritual time, some spiritual dialogue? Are you talking? Or, or is everything like look okay at church and everyone's smiling faces? Hey, high fives. How you doing, bro? And and your wife's at home like or in the back back uh, hallway crying her eyes out to the sisters. Wow. <coughs> because uh, things aren't spiritually wise at home and 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 the spirit of God isn't in our marriages. You know, um we got to maintain and take care of our marriages. That's right, bro. Yep. We got to set our our marriages before the throne of God and, yep. and, and love our wives yep. and our spouses. Brothers, in, in, your, in, your, in your single households, some of you are living together. Are you guys treating one another and dealing with each other spiritually in a godly way? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> are you taking one, taking care of one another? Are you harboring like bitterness in your heart towards one of the brothers in your household, or, or maybe in your Bible talk? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe one of the brothers in your household like used a pair of your underwear or, or grabbed your toothbrush or something and used your toothbrush or both or both. <laughs> And you're done. And you're thinking very critically about him. <laughs> you know, and you're upset. Uh, and the Bible calls us uh, in Matthew 8, 15, uh, that, that we need to talk about if, if uh, we have something on our heart Come toward on, bro, another brother. Us. That, that, that we need to take that to that brother, sit down, and, and, and yep. between the two of you, uh, the two of you Come work on, it out. Let's talk it out. Come on, bro. You know, <laughs> don't give Satan a foothold in your life. Come on, bro. And this applies to our marriages, too. How many of you, like, are sandbagging on your wife? Oh. And not really dealing with some things you need, you know you need to deal with at home. <laughs> Guys. God wants us to have flourishing, vibrant relationships. Yeah. Uh, in our brothers' households with one another, in our Bible talks, in our marriages with one another. He wants us to be unified, mm -hmm. to encourage one another, and to build each other up. Amen? Amen. <coughs> so let's not deal with one another in a worldly way and with the wisdom of the world, uh, but let's deal with one another in a, in a spiritual way way in an encouraging way um you know one of the things i like to do when i'm working with people um or even people i'm, I'm discipling uh back in la is like really trying to raise people up if someone raises up and becomes something more incredible than i could ever be and they do amazing things like that's that's my pride and joy to watch someone blossom and to go on and do great things in their life. And, and we should have the same kind of heart and spirit for one another and also in our families to see our, our family members and, and our brothers and sisters like flourish and go on to do greater things and be their, their greatest advocates. You know, um, one, one of the things I love about being here is I get to be a great uh, advocate to uh, Preston and Sean. I, I've seen them go through some very rough times. I was there to watch it. Uh, I'm great, great, grateful for uh, Mason and Natalie. Come on. Um, Come on and I know they've been through rough times, and, and I'm, I'm grateful to be here to, to encourage them and love them, as I know many of you have too. Come on. But uh, I think about our ministry uh, staff, and, and uh, um, I'm so like grateful to have a church here. Yeah. Yes. That's striving, that's vibrant. I mean, they, they truly love you and the work they're doing here with us yeah. all. Yeah. And uh, and I, I I bring this up to remind us, um, I guess to my shame, when I was younger with other leaders in my, my, my youthful Christian walk, I used to be cr critical of everything. And then I don't even know why. <laughs> I was just walking around mad about everything. Why do we got to do this? Why do we got to do that? Why do we do it this way? Why can't we do it this way? Well, it's not like I was in charge of anything. Right. <laughs> you know? And I, I'm just being real. I just, I just had a worldly wisdom and a critical mentality. I was young. And I just fought with anything that represented, like, leadership. <laughs> you know? And, and God, over time, like, humbles your character. Yeah. Yes. Humbles. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, brothers, and encourage you, be humbled through your reading of the scripture. Be humbled by your brother who comes in and loves you or your wife yeah. that, that shares something with you. Come on, because it, you, you, you would much rather be humbled by obeying the scriptures, yeah. by obeying someone who came to you in love out of advice than having God himself yeah. humble you. Because oh, yeah. yeah. when God humbles us, guys, there's no playing around. Like, yeah. Anyone who's been a disciple for any period of time knows what the highs and lows of being a Christian is all about. Yeah. 
And sometimes you really soar with the eagles and, and, and have some incredible, incredible times. And sometimes, man, you, you know, you're just cast down and just smashed to the mat. You've been in a boxing ring and you just took a punch to the liver and you can't breathe and you can barely move or get up. Uh, and and as, as disciples, we got to cling on to the scriptures. There, there's some of you right now going through some tough times. There's some, some of you right now going through some, some hard stuff. Keep fighting. That's right. Come Don't on, give up. Come on, bro. Keep going to the scriptures. Yes. Yeah. Be humble. Uh, our brother said, "Be teachable." Come on, yes. come on. I I regret not having more of a teachable spirit when I was younger and more youthful. Come on. I wasted a lot of time just running around yeah. doing I don't know what. Come on. But today, God's shown me a lot of things has humbled me in a lot of different ways. Um, and I wish I would have been more susceptible and listened better to my disciples. Um, they weren't trying to harm me. They were trying to help me grow yes. as a man, on, bro. On, bro. as a father, as a husband, Come as a on, Christian. Um, <laughs> through the washing of the word of God, it, guys, it works. Yep. Yes. Yes. The Word of God works. Yes. <laughs> God's yes. listening. Prayer works. It's amazing. I can't believe where my wife and I started. 19 years old. Who gets married at 19 years old? Oh, and 32 years later, still together. Yep. Wow. Not, not to my credit. Uh-huh. Guys, not to my credit. Uh-huh. I didn't. I didn't know. I was nineteen. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I didn't know any. It's to, to God's you. credit. Wow. It's to, to, to the credit of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. When we humbly accept the Word yes. and we strive to please our God, yes, when on. we put forth the kingdom first, like was talked about in benevolence, um, God helps piece everything together. Yep. Sometimes we worry about the wrong things too much. Wow. Yeah. When all we really need to focus is on today, yes. obeying the word and serving God and, 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 and serving him and loving his yes. people. Yeah. Come on, bro. And then everything else works itself out. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, um, some other things that can show us if we're living uh, with a worldly wisdom is found in Galatians 5. Come on. These are shouldn't be in Christian households. We should be living the opposite of these things. Uh, when we studied the Bible, we learned what like repentance of sin was, right? right. It was like 180 degree, turn the other way from it. <laughs> right? Come so on, as Christians today... Are we repenting from sin in our life? Wow. Have we made the 180 turn and walked away? In Galatians 5, 19, uh, we all have read this many, many times, the majority of us. The acts of the sinful, the acts of the flesh are obvious. <coughs> Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Brothers, I want to make it to heaven. I want you to make it to heaven. Come on, brother. Or any of these things in our life, as we read these, what impacts us? And how has our week been in our morality, in our purity? I like talking about, you're going to hear me talk about purity a lot. Good, bro. Yeah. Good. A lot. Come on. Because you can be pure yes. if yeah. you're not sure being can. pure. Yeah. It is possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't think it is, Satan's uh, faking you out. Yep. He's trying to convince you that you can't do it. 
Yeah. But I'm here to tell you today, you can. Yeah. yeah. It is possible. You can do it. There are brothers that are being pure. Yep. yep. Come on, bro. It's awesome. And I've been there before, too, where I've struggled so much to stay away from the internet pornography, to, to stay away from falling into masturbation. Um, I fought for it. You, and, and the reality is, I'll be honest with you, you got to fight for your purity. Yep. You got to hunger Come on, and pray bro. to God, please, God, help me to crave Appreciate and desire Appreciate purity that. in my life Come over on, immorality. Come over on, man. Purity. You got to just like cry out and scream it out to God. Like, yep. you know, I, guys, I've had prayers where I'm like, God, why'd you make me weak? I'm so weak. I walk around like this and, and I fail so much. I'm a failure. And if you go to God and you continue to study it out and if you continue to fight for it, God will grant you your prayer and he will grant you to be a man of God who walks in purity. It is possible. It can oh, be done. Right. The scriptures say it can be done. <laughs> it's the word of God and it's the truth. Amen. Amen. That's awesome, bro. This is awesome. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, um, <laughs> this is, I had a great conversation with a brother over the weekend, at a, and we talked about Psalm 119. We talked about how do older men stay pure? It's <laughs> 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 Jeff. <laughs> we were talking about that, brother. And I'm like, and then we referenced, you know, we're talking about uh, Psalm 119, 8 through 10, and, and I'm like, well, we do the same thing as the younger brothers. How can, and as Psalm 119, 8 through 10 says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? And it says, by living according to, the, to your word. Yeah. Living according to your word is a way to stay on the path of purity. Come on. So we got to ask ourselves if we're failing in this area, are we truly walking according to God's Come word? Come on. Now here, here's here's a morsel. Um, Come on, bro. There was some other dialogue I had with, with uh, some brothers, and uh, we were talking about music and TV and all these things. Guys, a long time ago, I like turned off HBO. I turned off Stars. They even offer the the junk to you free. Oh, yep. There, take it free. Yep, they know what they're doing. And you get all these other, you know, shows and different things. Well, typically at night on those channels, on the weekends, they're introducing porn into your house through those. Yeah, oh, it's true. Wow. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And I made decisions when I started to see I would struggle with that. And then I'm thinking, oh, okay. I know on the weekend my wife's going to go to bed at such and such a time. I'll just hang out in my game room. And then switch over to HBO or Stars when everyone's asleep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's how Satan works. Yep. Yes. <coughs> it's not only on your phone. I've been on Bible Gateway doing studies, and there's little pop up things of, of chicks and bikinis and stuff popping yep. up on ads. And I'm yes. like, what's that about? Satan. It's Satan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's Satan. Yep. Holy so, Christ. guys, you got to think. And take your, your walk with God to another level. Yeah. Yeah. I even stopped listening to certain music. And I'm not here to tell you what kind of music to listen to. But I liked R&B music. I met my wife at a dance club. When I listen to certain types of music, it makes me think about sex with women. I'm just That's where it goes. We're talking about the uh and the uh and the uh. You know, and I'm like... I don't even want to be thinking about that. So I listen to different types of music that doesn't take my mind and my heart to that level. I want to be in a different place. I want to be in a place with God. I want to be like God. I want. I, I pray, God, help me to be pure like you're pure. God, God, help me. God, help me to be holy because you're holy. God... God, help me to be righteous because you're righteous. And God, if I don't have these qualities, I'm not going to see you, so I need them. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 
and I don't want to miss you. I want to be accepted into yeah. your kingdom. We got to have some like crazy talks with God. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, especially in this area. Okay. Come on. Come on. And the wisdom from heaven. <sighs> Man, the refreshing wisdom from heaven. James 3, 17 through 18. This is what the wisdom from heaven looks like, guys. The wisdom uh, that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure. What? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yep. When we're spewing off our wisdom to others, have we, have we been pure in our morality? The wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure. Then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere peacemakers who sow in peace and they reap a harvest of righteousness. This is what it feels like. This is what it smells like. This is, this is what it looks like to have wisdom from heaven. Come on. When your brother offends you and you're like, bro, this really like hurt my feelings. I know. It hurt my feelings. I wish this didn't happen and and and, and I, I just need to be open with you right now. And we need to talk about this because like I'm I'm struggling with bitterness in my life. You know, and and I just want to be Get it out. Yep. transparent with you and open with you. Come on. And uh uh, this is the way we need to be working towards in our life to be more merciful. You know, so, you know my grandson was going crazy and crying. I'm just like, oh, I'm just feeling stressed out. I'm like, please stop. I wanted to hide. And I did. Okay. I did hide in the bedroom. I'm like, oh, please, stop crying. I, I need to speak to the brothers tonight. And I was tempted to like be critical of him. And he's just a little guy. He's like, have a rough go. You know, sometimes we have a rough go. Yeah. But, but we need to focus on, on having these kind of fruits in our families, uh, in our, our, our households, yeah. with one another, with our children. Um, we need the kingdom to be a, a refuge, a, a place of peace, yep. a place of purity, yeah. uh, a sanctuary where people could come to be healed and, and to help draw closer to God. Amen. 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 Uh, wisdom from heaven is re received through living with the written attributes uh, that are these qualities we see in our life to receive the heavenly wisdom. Oh, I'm sorry. This was a question. So is are these qualities we see in our life uh, to receive this heavenly wisdom from God? So if we're struggling with with. Um, uh, the worldly wisdom. We, we need to confess those things. We need to get them out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we need to close ourselves uh, with the heavenly wisdom from God. Um, James 1, 13 through 18 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by what? No. Their own evil desires. Don't be deceived. Yep. My dear brothers and sisters, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first, first fruits of all that he created. So guys, God loves us. He wants us to be a new creation. And, uh, and I know many of us have changed radically. Um, but we need to continue to change. One, on. one of the things that, that, that older Christians, uh, uh, I think, struggle the most with is like we could, we could, we could like seem like we got everything like together and figured out. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like we're, we got it all on straight. But the truth is, like, what creeps into uh, an older Christian's life, uh, in my experiences, is you, you could start to get, if you're not cautious, like a Pharisee, pharisaical, kind of 
looking down on things, getting very self-righteous. Self-righteous. I'm so good. You know, I do so much. You know, I do so much for people. And as older Christians, we gotta we gotta really guard our hearts and look at um, how we look, and we can get very critical. And we gotta we gotta make sure. One of the things I really strive to to share and, and teach to to older, especially remnant disciples, because we're prickly. Like we've been through some like mess. Yes. Nothing like Jesus. No. But but uh, uh, you know we're a bit like tattered up and scarred, right? Mm -hmm. And and so sometimes we could go to kind of a negative place. Yeah. And we really got to fight to not fall into the sin of negativity, and and really focus on on the joy of the Spirit and and building up God's kingdom. Um, and so that that's one of the the things I, I really strive to to share with remnant disciples is to not get critical and also uh, to forgive. There, there could be some deep rooted bitterness in there. And you, you need to like scrape and pluck and, and, and cut that stuff out. It's disgusting. And it makes us like, like ugly. And uh, uh, so if we don't deal with it, uh, it, it just kind of like rots us from the inside. If we, if we allow it, so, so when we have bitterness in our life, you know, deal with it. Deal with it in your marriages, in your households, in your Bible talks. Don't let that bitter root grow up to, to poison the beauty that God's trying to create in the church. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, in in uh, wrapping it up here, uh, is Galatians five uh, twenty two, uh, and and it says. Uh, but the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Like we could do these things abundantly without limit. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in the spirit. Uh, let us not become conceited. Hence, the older. Uh, example of, yeah. of disciples uh, provoking and envying each other. Bro, uh, brothers, as we live out our lives as disciples, let us continue to live and strive to live by heavenly wisdom, by the fruits of the Spirit, to build up God's kingdom and His church, and, and to be the men of God uh, that He created us to be. And uh, with that, that's the, uh, the lesson for today, and I appreciate it.